What's up guys, I'm Casey. This is our farm, Honey Tree Farm. I run this with my wife and uh, two part-timers. And so this video is gonna be about our irrigation system. I brought this up back in the summer, but I haven't had a chance to make a video yet to go over everything. So this is gonna be the video that explains it. And what we did was we switched from regular old, just like timers off Amazon and switched to a real irrigation system. So we have valves. Uh, we have the, like the control board and there's an app on our phone where we can control the irrigation from our phone. I'm going to show that here. So this is the HydroWise app. Everything here, um, that's really part of whatever controller you get if you want to go this way. This is for this plot here. Pretty cool. This made a huge difference for us this year in having everything set up on a timer so it ran. Like I ran the drip tape in the tunnels overnight, drip tape on all the outdoor pots in the morning, and then let it rest during the day. And then also during the day, if we needed the water, we could hand water, set up misters or whatever we needed. And, or if we're washing, we could use the water for that. So um, I had help installing this. I called a local irrigation guy, his name's Jason, and his business here, we're in North Carolina. His business is called Bright Ideas um, Irrigation and Lighting. Uh, so I called him and I told him what, we had going on like we already have an irrigation system set up from our well to the timers to different irrigation stations and then I asked like how can we get this on a real timer a real control board with real valves that I can trust that I know will turn on and shut off at the right times because the other ones never did sometimes they would run all night flood a bed sometimes they wouldn't turn on at all and then things would dry out and die so uh, essentially, it's the same thing you would put on the large landscape, um, like, a, like a huge home on a golf course or something with tons of different zones that they have to irrigate, the shrubbery, trees, grass, whatever. It's the same thing that you'd use for that, just applied to this, to our setting, which is, uh, we have like 114 beds, I think. It's like 12 different plots, um, totaling like a little over an acre total. Entire land is four and a half acres, but really growing on a little over one. So just getting water to those spots and making it more efficient with the drip tape, the misters, the overhead irrigation like this. And then like in the middle of the season, we can leave the farm on a Sunday and go hiking or something and know that everything's gonna be watered just fine. Like when it's 90 plus degrees in July or August, we don't have to stress about things drying out and all that stuff we'll know that's watered so I recorded uh, the install from the day when Jason was here and I recorded um, after he taught me and explained everything to me how to set up a box and uh, I don't really remember what I recorded but um, hopefully it's good so what I've done ahead of time is do all the digging which kind of sucked because it hasn't rained here so it's been really dry and uh, I had to do it all by hand because there's already water lines and stuff in here from the irrigation system before. So digging this out for the new boxes, uh, digging that all the way up to where we're gonna put the control box in the white shed. Digging this here to the, down there to the other irrigation stations. And I'm digging this for wire. So we're gonna, there's wire that runs from the controller to the valve boxes. I don't know anything about that. Jason's gonna be building and teaching us about and that's gonna control when it kicks on and opens and when it closes. There's the ditch there. Kind of a pain to do this peak season, but it needs to be done. So put the control box in here. All along the driveway, this really sucked. To the edge here, and then along this edge of the driveway. And then down here to plot 10. So that's all for the wire. So hopefully when we get this set up, we can irrigate better. And, and then we can focus on the soil. You can get soil sensors for moisture. Um, we're going to get soil tests so we can, get, so we can focus on the crops more. Um, better IPM that way too. This integrated pest management. And all around this should be a good investment. So all the parts for this were like 1500 bucks, I think. Really not that bad when you consider those junk timers are like $70, I think. Plus the just the labor in um, digging, which isn't really that bad. I'll show you the tools I used. 
This is a blue spade. It's in our Amazon store. Sold by a king of spades, I'm pretty sure. So that's a 12 inch shovel. It's like 11 pounds of solid steel. It's really, they're really nice. I've been using these since I started landscaping in like 2008. Also use just a regular leaf blower to blow the dirt out instead of like trying to scoop it out with my hands. And the pressure washer. So the pressure washer is good for areas like this where it's mostly stone and really, really, really compacted soil. Real quick. Where yeah, you that, want me? That's good. Like here in the sun? Yeah. Hey, good morning. I'm Jason and my business name is Bright Ideas Outdoor Lighting and Irrigation in Taylorsville, North Carolina. Yep. Okay. So this is this is our this is our hunter controller, you know, this 24 yeah. zone. Um, this is the industry standard on Wi-Fi control um, for for um, I, I hesitate saying commercial. It's not commercial, but it's not really residential either because we have 24 zones here. So we're maxed out on the Wi-Fi until you do something that's um, a little more complicated. Uh, if, if you want to expand, of course, you, you, you'd have to get a different controller, a, a completely separate unit um, in this configuration. But you could also buy the, the bigger controller, but then you have to get into the cloud and you have to learn a lot more about their particular, it's not Linux, it's called calculus or something. So uh, really a little bit more difficult to set up. But this completely easy setup is just like a residential controller only it's Wi-Fi and touchscreen, and uh, again, it is the industry standard. That's the Hunter uh, HydroWise Pro C H C controller. All right, so we're going to run some uh, some conduit down through here just to protect our wire, so we don't hit it with something sharp and cut it. Because cut wire is it means uh, you know no, your your water doesn't come out and the crops die. So the main thing here is is the solid platform where you can operate on site or off site to uh, water, your, you hydrate your crop with it without any worries, solid platform. So the control wire will come out through here and then of course into our trench. And uh, this is our heavy gauge. Um, this carries 24 volts. This is a low voltage wire actually, that clock will put off low voltage and just close a circuit on each one of these strands. Uh, don't make the mistake. That white is always common. Don't let somebody tell you that you can use any color. Just don't get confused with it. White is equal to C. That is always the common on any circuit that you're working on. The rest of these are like your load wires. They're like the hot wires on, you know, that's the black wire and there actually is a black wire, but then the rest of them each are zones Consider them zones. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, thirteen zones on that strand. That's great. So that's a big heavy gauge wire. We'll run that through the trenches that our guys here at Honey Farm have already, Honey Tree Farm have already dug for us. I love Honey Tree Farm. We go right through here, and we've got three stations on this side, three irrigation stations. Uh, that Casey has been using the orbit controller on which believe it or not is is a, f a fair uh, Machine I mean for the price point It's it's a fair machine, but it's finicky the little valves are uh, the, the little diaphragms and valves in there are, are, are not as hardy They're not as robust as what we're gonna put in the hunters. We'll show you those later um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig bigger holes here and we're gonna run this wire right through here and then we'll have a manifold and that will that will change all of that so it, it you won't you won't see the tree and you won't see the controllers out here it'll just be the the hoses running right into the manifold so our wire will follow along to uh this station as well we'll have to dig that out a little bit more to get down exposed and then down here we fully expose and again that that big stranded wire will come all the way down to our six zones right here we got six zones here and so we've exposed our poly pipe now when you get into the plumbing with irrigation it's it's varied um, for redundancy I'm gonna leave an outlet for Casey to do whatever he wants to with with that ball valve on it all we're gonna do is cut the pump off and uh, after we build our, um, our our manifold to fit into place down here uh, six six valves total um, Six zones total. Then, then, then we'll we'll turn the machine off, uh, clip it to match, 
we'll, we'll uh, install the manifold and uh, anchor it into place. And then from there, it'll, it'll turn up and have pop-ups that will um, eventually go back into these, these hoses that we see here, which we'll probably have to unpin or maybe extend or something to uh, get. We'll, we'll look at that once we build the, the yeah, manifold. It's, it's pretty messy. It's, it, it's, no, no, it's, it's got it's, beat up a lot. <laughs> it, it, yeah, and but that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's doing a job. Uh, it's utilitarian. Um, but we're going to clean it up a bit. We're going we're gonna to take these controllers out and these hoses off the tree and then see so maybe you want to put a spigot there or something and then what you'll see instead is hoses just kind of running into like a, like an exhaust manifold on a car or something, you know, it just run right into the uh, top and then it goes into the ground so it doesn't freeze and uh, uh, all the control valves will be down in the ground. The, the electromechanical valves, they're operated by a, um, by 24 volts again. Uh, the, the clock will say, okay, zone one, click. Uh, sends a signal that energizes the solenoid. Uh, it's, it's much like a starter solenoid on your car, it, which engages the gear. Uh, that solenoid will, will actually disengage. A, um, it, it draws up through magnetic energy a little pin, and, and that uh, is enough to open the main diaphragm and let full, full water flow through just that one valve. And that's what's key um, with, with this system. It'll be a robust, hardy PGV valve. Uh, uh, from Hunter, um, which is the standard for, for agriculture uh, in the United States and across the world, I think. So um, we'll run all the way back to the clock with that first strand. Um, I'm going to pull a loop up at this second station. So that'll be six and then nine, right? So yeah, uh, ten. That, that first harness will take care, of, uh, take care of these six and then it'll take care of that leaves us seven zone, and, and we only got three here. Okay, so then I'll take care of those three on that same one harness, and then, uh, um, so that's three, six, we got three left, right. Three or four wires left, so three, three or four more valves in, in this will be controlled by that same harness, which is awesome. That means today, what we will have for sure, um, controlled by the clock uh, will be these three irrigation stations will for sure be set in and controlled by your controller uh, hope, hopefully before close of business today and you'll be able to see exactly how cool that actually is that hydroized system you just operate it with a push of a button okay so we got three valves here um, we're doing two sets of three Three in each box, and I'm gonna leave room for expansion for Casey. So, the trick to a good weld, this, this is actually a chemical weld, the trick to a good weld is a nice straight cut on the end. And um, if you look in there, you can see there's a stop that this will butt up against. So, you just wanna make sure to clean with the primer. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it again. Uh, the factory says you have 30 seconds from the time you put the primer on before it it um, stops its activation process. So what it does is it activates that PVC pipe, heats it up, and then I can come back for the finish the weld with the glue. And I'm just going to do one coupling at a time. Okay, and I'll just take a time, turn it on there about 90 degrees. Okay, make sure it seats good. Hold it tight for a few seconds, and you'll notice that I try to keep a bunch of excess out out of there. Um, wipe that off, wipe that out, kind of keep that clean so that later on those bits of glue don't end up in a, a, a filter somewhere. Okay, and so that's that's one, all right, and, and then next we'll set, I'm gonna set three together, like I said, like this, um, and and then we'll attach the valves after the fact, so we'll, we'll do that twice. Slide that right around and watch it until it breaks on the end and you can see clean it off I've got a nice straight clean clip that will fit right into that and seat in there properly so rinse and repeat we close the gap and we make sure that those are lined up there's a line in the form I don't know if you can see the line in the form there and that's what I go by see the line on the back side and, and that tells us that we're square together in there so that our valves don't look crooked um, and then we just wipe out any excess, keep it clean.
Okay. Yeah, I, I, I tend to choose my primary and bright colors first. So always have to have the white in every box or something's wrong. And then I choose my red, yellow, blue, green. Red, yellow, blue, green. And then there's a dark blue and a purple in there because they were the bright, next brightest color. So when I go to my next set of boxes, I know that I'm looking for more of these earth tones. There's, there's pink in there, but that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll remember and we'll write it down. We'll use a marker on our T's once we actually get ready to wire it. So that's the madness behind that wiring harness to control each one of those valves. Now what I'm thinking is, let's get this piece. So this is how we tie into it. If that is right there like that, and then our box fits, I have to put a, a brick maybe on the back side so you don't crush it, but our box, we want it to be about ground level, you know, equal to grade. And so this will fit in there like that. And of course, you know, you'll have this much more room. So then our valves will come off and I'll leave you, I'll leave you um, space in case, in case for some reason you need to cut a valve off, I'll put an extra, you know, inch on there. That way you can, you at least have room for expansion on, or, or, or uh, repair on, on one valve. That's just another technique that you're, a good irrigation guy would do for you is leave you some room on that side of the manifold so later on if something happened to that valve body for some reason you could, you know, and, and, and always remember, that was backwards, always remember to look for that arrow on there. You know, there's the tail and there's the point. So the water fl flows that way. So that's the way that valve will sit down in that box down in there. Down there. Is that gonna give us what we need? I'm gonna use that one, but we might have to dig a little bit out. So let's do yeah, longer than 14 on the next one. So if you wanna weld a 90 in there, or I can, right. either way, try our first line, bro, and see uh, see what you got. See it, see if it measures up to what you your standards of pressure and flow from where you are at, and just make sure that we don't need to make any major adjustments before we go too far. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay. I was out here till like 11 trying to figure this thing out and get it right. So I can go to plot four, run it, or water it, 40 minutes. This is so cool. About ready to fill the holes back in. And I'm gonna show how to build one of those. So we're gonna have a zone for each tunnel. So that's three zones. That's how we manage it. And then a zone for a plot that we're gonna build here. And then the plot that's running up there. So I've got the hole big enough to fit the box. And then I just kinda set these pieces in. So you can see how everything connects together. This is a piece that goes into the one inch water pipe. And then the other side is, that's called a slip. So you can glue stuff in there. And then the T's, and then that one is the elbow because we're gonna end there. Um, if, I were to, if I were to be doing more down this way, I would do another T there, and that's where the other water pipe would connect in. So, these are the valves. Uh, still learning about them, really. I was out here till 11 last night, messing with the other zones, trying to get them right. Yeah, Jason explained these pretty well, and I'm just showing here. He taught me how to do all this stuff yesterday, and I paid for his time, so I'm really thankful that he taught me. Um, now I can troubleshoot it and add on or whatever. So that's the basic layout there. Anywhere, everywhere you see a gap, there's gonna be PVC. So here, there, 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 here, here. And 
then I'll show the risers afterwards and that's probably a pretty important thing it's pretty simple and then the wiring I'll show that too but really just for this part it's just a matter of measuring and cutting each piece to fit in there so you can build your actual manifold obviously you want to make sure your box fits in here everything fits in the box it's level with the soil so you know you don't want to build the manifold too big to not fit in the box okay so I'm just dry fitting these here make sure it all works still fits in the box and the next thing is this piece so this is all one inch by the way this is the elbow goes on there on all four and then on the top of that is this one it's threaded down to a three-quarter inch that's a one inch goes on top and then this fitting goes in here on to the wiring so this is going to connect into what we're already using which is this um, half inch black pipe so that way we just build these and hook it up to our initial and hook it up to our existing um, irrigation lines so now it's all pretty much ready to go uh, I just have to glue everything and then put some plumbers tape on here make sure that's tight and then hook up those lines wire it and we should be good all right here's the 13 strand wire here and there's a little string in here in the end and if it's poking out you can grab it this is something Jason taught me too and And you can use it to cut open your wire coating here. So then it opens up into all these different wires. And so we have four zones. So we're going to take four of these wires. So let's do yellow, purple, pink, and green. And then we need a common wire for the electricity to cycle through and go back. And that is always the white wire. So these we're not even going to use for this zone. So, on the valves here, you have these which are a solenoid, and I've been hooking up this one next to the off to the actual control board or the colored wire, and hooking up this one to the neutral or the white wire. That way, if anything ever happens, I always know that this one is hooked to the control board and this one's hooked to the common. And that's been on all of them, so all 24 are hooked the same way. It doesn't matter which one hooks up, but Jason suggested for troubleshooting, and it makes a lot of sense, then I always know that this is the, the hot wire and then this is the common. So the red wires come pre-stripped or whatever you want to call that. I think that's what it's called. Um, so we're going to want to match the length on here, roughly. So now this is my hot wire that's going to go to one of my zones on the control board. I'm going to wrap this 
around. You can actually probably trim it a little bit. So I've got that there. Take a wire nut, put it on top, tug on it, make sure it's good. And then lesson learned from the and then lesson learned from the other pots. Um, I knocked a bunch loose working on it, so I'm just gonna tape this now. So it stays tight. So the green wire that I have here that I'm gonna to hook to the control board is going to charge this valve which will irrigate whichever tunnel I put the pipe to. Same here. The actual colors of the wire don't matter and you assign the um, meaning to them. So here's the three that have been wired so far. Green to the first one. Yellow to the second one pink to the third one. And the fourth one will be purple. Common wire, gonna make a little longer. Exposed, expose a little longer. And you're gonna take the other red wire from each uh, solenoid or valve. And they're all going to connect to the common wire. From my understanding, this keeps the flow of electricity going through so that um, everything can communicate with the control board and uh, keep the electricity flowing from each valve to the next valve. So just wrapped all those together like that. I'm not gonna make it look nice yet because we still have to um, hook up the water and everything and troubleshoot it and make sure it all works, blah, 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 all that stuff. So you can see here, this all fits in. And um, Jason said, you never want the actual box to rest on the PVC. So I'm gonna have to find some, so I'm gonna have to find some bricks, build a lot platform here. That's what I did for the other ones. But yeah, so now what we need to do is attach the colored wires to the corresponding zone that we want them to be. which is really just screwing it in to a little spot. Okay, this is the control board. So these are the wires hooked to the valves I just hooked up down in pot 10. Uh, yellow, green, purple, and pink. So these are gonna hook into these last four zones, just like these are hooked in. And uh, yeah, then we'll run it and see where we're at. And also hook the other common wire up. Okay, running water to it for the first time. These are valves that allow you to manually operate it, so it's pushing all the air out. I had to do some other work to the line too, so. Oh, there's a lot of air in there. Woo! Oh, it worked. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'd imagine there's a more professional way to do that, but it works. All right, now 
if I hook this up right, they should work here on the app. So, I think this will be this one. Yep, I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but it's running. Now the next thing to check is to go check the drip tape and make sure it's coming out good. There's a ton of salad, carrots, and beans over here. I can hear the drip tape filling up, so. Yep, looks good.